It's when this train, when, all right, that's me. It scared the bejesus out of me when it came by. <laughs> I, I haven't stood on a on a deck like that watching a train in New England in in forever, and it scared well, the bejesus out. Well, of me. Well, it scared you because the, the shot was Josh was up on a ladder on the right. other side of the tracks, <laughs> right. and we and and somehow our, our one of my co-producers Jim Stoddard had talked to Amtrak and got them to reroute the train schedule so the train was coming by when we needed it in the shot. And um, uh, uh, Josh is up on a ladder, and the train comes by, and he just about blew him off the ladder. Um, and this is uh, John Cry. Yeah. John Cry John plays Cry. all of them. It broke down. They put me on a shuttle in Buffalo. I don't want to talk about it. Jesus, well, welcome. <laughs> so now, Paul, do you remember when we sat down, when I said to you, you okay? we don't have a lot of money, we want to do this, we're, we're going to pull the trigger. Here's a 155-page script. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I, you know what, James? I've, I, James and I, and, and Tom and Tom Mizoraka, we've all worked together for a very long time. We've all known each other since college, and I think that for me personally, getting the script it, it was very much in James's voice was very clear throughout the film. Tom's voice is there too. I think it's very, you can really feel their, their touches on the, on the characters as well as the story. You know, I think what you're referencing, this whole scene is, you know, it's like 12 pages long. And it's, just, you know, I'm not saying, hey, how you doing? Fine, you? Good, great, let's go. No, it's not that. His dialogue has, is, it's very sharp on the tongue. I, I tend to put James in the position because as director and co-writer on the film, I tend to kind of carry that point of view a lot. I do feel this is sort of James' baby, and he yeah. asked me if I would help raise it with right, him. Right, right. And, and that I sort of add him. So you can see my touches here or there, but it, it definitely felt like. But but you but we, we were talking about that scene we condensed those characters we condensed earlier. You did a lot of work to shape this thing. I mean, when I, I when I came to you, it was huge, and you really helped hone it and edit it and, and focus it. And uh, it was a little. of <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite it makes great moments great of the entire movie, right there. Yeah, John, Apparently, I mean, he's yeah. brought bricks with him because yeah. I'm. It's and, so difficult for me to lift. <laughs> <laughs> and and not only what another is having such three fantastic actors and ad libbers as well they would come in and they would bring their own stuff too and there was no e there was no ego whatsoever i mean it was like if it it was for what made the characters and the story better it's funny it's how you want to make a movie you want to make it with your friends you want to make it so that you're comfortable and relaxed you can be creative you don't you, you're not you're not fearful of making suggestions you're approaching it from a character point of view and just enjoying yourself along yeah. the way. Uh, even, you know, one of the ones you designed? Even even if the budget restricts, uh, you, know, I, you know, lobster bisque, yeah. you know. <laughs> oh, you didn't have that? We, uh, I didn't get that. Oh. That's how low on the totem pole. You don't get many <laughs> opportunities genuinely to work with people that you've worked in close quarters body, with yeah. for years, and where you know each other's rhythms. You know how you, everyone's gonna play, you know, play a certain thing, and you can bounce off each other. So yeah. should, I wish this beat was a little. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Good. Well, it was supposed, we were supposed to have a cat, and we couldn't get a cat, mm -hmm. and then it became a question of, uh, well, how do we get John to the couch? And then uh, I just wish this was a little. Had to put him down. And for those for those interested in the writing process, the names of the cats probably went through like fifteen generations from right. television characters to rock stars to Liz and David. This is actually my favorite scene. So, we're gonna talk about my children all that, that night? And this is one of those fourteen-page scenes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what, and just to answer your question clearly, it was about rehearsal. A lot of rehearsal. It was about rehearsal, and it was about not, as a, you know, this is my first, oh, as my second feature film, but my first as a leading role, and with this much dialogue, and I approached it as a piece by piece. I had to get out of my head a little bit about having to memorize the entire script, and just saying, okay, I'm in this scene, what am I doing, where am I going, what do I want, and just kind of following that point of view in just those 12 pages. When you're when you're dealing with a with a with a script, a low budget script, obviously we couldn't have had a thousand locations, so <clears throat> we were going to have situations where there were 12, 14 page scripts, and it almost became like a film play in a lot of ways. And you had to. It's not just as simple as getting in and doing the scene and getting out. You had to be aware of the highs and lows of the scene and and play to the fact that it was going to be a crescendo and a. Sort of dating model. I like that though. I think you know it's it. You know, I'm a huge Howard Hawks fan, and I think it really has the uh, that quality 
uh, of it, of being a, being play like, being verbal, being character driven. <laughs> and it's funny actually when we started uh, talking about casting and the production process. Uh, Everyone, I love that, and, and it doesn't get a big enough laugh every time. One of the freebies you gave me is one of my favorite. <laughs> I just, I, I, I actually, <laughs> the character's written in such a way that he doesn't even realize how, how incredibly angry he is. It's so <laughs> repressed. It's just like it's. I almost wonder if like there was a point in his life that it was so repressing that he was so outwardly aggressively gay, like like just probably so self abusive and just so self-destructive that at some point, like, I don't know if it's the relationship or whatever, it kind of recalibrated him and he was like, oh, I can obsess over this now. <laughs> and kind of repositioned his life to be about the relationship. Because he's just so repressed in this for me. <laughs> his anger is He is a tight... He really he's is. A tightly he's wild. Yeah, he's really wrapped up. But it seems very New England, though. Oh, God, yeah. That's he's yeah. such a... Absolutely. But I was just going to say about the casting. When we started to get into talk about casting, oh, I basically Rudy. said that that uh, uh, you know I kind of know who I want to do this with. And there's always that stigma of, well, you want to just make a movie with your friends. I'm like, well, these are people I've worked with for years and years. And um, they said, well, you can get this person, you can get this person, you can get this person. I said, no, I want I want two dyslexics and a writer. <laughs> uh, and, and I say guess this, who is who? Guess, uh, we'll let you decide. Yeah, you can pick it. We're gonna have a, a little check a little mark contest. at the end of this. Yeah. But basically, you know, you're seeing uh, uh, Paul and, and John cry here in this scene, and and the reason, I mean, of course, they're my friends and I love them and I would love to work with them. But the reason they're really uh, in this movie was because they did a film a few years ago called Stark Raving Mad, written and directed by our good friends uh, Drew Daywalt and Dave Schneider. And I had the uh, good fortune of going to see that film. Good film, by the way. You should rent it. But going to see that film at a Vigil. screening in Woodland Hills it's one of those test card screenings like you bring in an audience a couple hundred people they write the cards up and you know we didn't know anybody in the audience and this film unspools in front of us and uh, Paul and John got such a huge reaction from the audience in that room that I was like well there it is that's you know they're my friends but look at, look at what they're doing up on the screen I guess we're lucky that our friends are talented yeah, it goes both ways too I mean you guys credited for writing it but also credited James I, you know, it's, it's like I'll say it at the end of this film. I just, I'll say it at the end of this film, but like I'll say it here first. You no, did it. Everybody else sitting on a couch, God bless them. They want to do this, but you did it. You accomplished it. So I, there's great value in that as well. Remember when you transferred? And it ho hopefully soon it will be finished. So the film will be <laughs> <laughs> should be done yeah. by the time you're. When you're seeing this in 2025. <laughs> yeah. Only to leave six months later, <laughs> what is it? So you could uh, films are not finished, they're abandoned. Get a job yeah. at that advertising agency, which you told Now, do you guys remember how much we rehearsed the these, these scenes? Oh, I remember how much we rehearsed these scenes. Again, because, we, I mean, we did have the luxury of having a long rehearsal period, if I remember correctly. People, mm. they don't work that actually is the, is the neat thing about having seen it in front of a, an audience, is, 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 is you when you've rehearsed it so no. much, you kind of pick out your favorite moments, and this is going to work, and this is... And once it's, it's in front of an audience, it's not, it's not yours anymore. Right. And they decide what they like and what they don't like, and uh, it's funny to hear a laugh somewhere where you're like, that was funny. I know that you're not, because if you were, you wouldn't be calling me at 2 o'clock in the morning. 2 in the morning, your time. Yeah, well, somewhere in this scene, so far, based on the screenings we've done with the audiences... That Wait, this is my favorite line in the, enti the no. entire thing. Do you love her? Yes, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dismissive... Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I, I, we may have passed it here. You've been a Jew since July. It's, it's that's pure. Yes. That was that's, that's, that's gold. That's yes. my favorite. That's my favorite. You've been a Jew <laughs> since July. It's, it's great about the co-writing process is you do sort of like, oh, that's a James line, but it's great. And that's my line. That's great. But then there's sometimes, who came up with that? It, but it's great, you know? I like the statue behind him. Look at the statue. <laughs> David. <laughs> yeah, Brandy Crease in our... Uh, Production designer oh, and some flourishes to put here. In great there work. Kind of I think I'm going to get one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so they didn't let you take David it home. Or, uh, we're actually selling that on eBay. If you yeah. want to, you put can a pick that up. It, yes. Go to the Happy Holidays eBay page <laughs> and you can pick up memorabilia from the set. <laughs> it's, it's funny you're talking about the writing and, and going back and forth, and you guys have your own unique styles. And <laughs> it reminds me of. The, that Stephen King, Peter Straub story when they wrote The Talisman, that they would actually go, they would try to write like the other one just to screw with people. <laughs> so, oh, that's got to be a Tom line. No, no, that's a James line. <laughs> Well, it's like the old uh, uh, Monty Python did that too, didn't Because uh, Michael Palin and Terry Jones 
would try to write a Cleese Chapman scene, and then John Cleese <laughs> and Graham Chapman would try to write a Terry Jones. Can I just say I hate my hair in this scene? I just, I hate it. We can, we can fix it in post. Yeah. <laughs> can we get that done, please? And also, uh, I want to point out the, the music also in the film. Uh, Zach Hexham, mm. <laughs> who did the music, really did a, a really, really, really nice job and uh, ties the film together, I think. Yeah, you did a great um, job. I always love what you did with your feet here. It's Shut up. It's good attention to detail. My favorite shot, drinking the coffee. Very nice. These shots are nice. Because we were, I mean, on a 14-day schedule, we were probably doing, Do I have a cord? Like, 10 pages a day? Something absurd Man, like I that. I thought it was like, I thought it was an average of 14 a day. I think, I think it was. <laughs> well. There's a whole scene here that uh, never quite worked. So By the way, this is in L.A. Yeah, we're in L.A. now. We've blown out the film so that that sort of looks like snow back there, although I think those are all leaves on the trees. What were you going to say, James? I was just saying that there was a whole scene. I was never happy with this whole scene. I mean, we, you... I wish we'd shot a little differently in retrospect. Uh, 